female infertility is defined as the inability of a lady to conceive even after one year of unprotected sexual intercourse. We advise women to seek treatment in women who are less than 35 years of age to try at least for a year and for women who are above 35 years of age at least six months and if they don't conceive within that period they should have a basic examination with a gynecologist and do run some tests. So there are two terms used to describe infertility in women. There is primary infertility, which is a term that we use when a lady has never conceived in the past. Secondary infertility, when a lady has conceived and the outcome of that pregnancy could have been a miscarriage or an ectopic pregnancy or she might have delivered too. So if she is wanting a second child and she has tried at least for one year, then we call it as secondary infertility. With respect to causes of infertility, the first one I would like to describe is hormonal disorders. And the commonest disorder is thyroid condition. Now thyroid function in the form of a hypothyroidism or a hyperthyroidism wherein thyroid is overactive or underactive. Both can lead to infertility in women. It's important to check thyroid levels in women who are suffering from infertility. Similarly, there are other hormone disturbances that can lead to infertility, especially around anovulation, that is lack of egg development. The commonest is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now this is a condition which many people know it has PCOS or PCOD. It's a condition wherein there is anovulation most frequently. That means menses are irregular due to lack of proper development of the egg and this in turn results in infertility. This is also becoming a very common cause of infertility. The third cause for hormonal disorder that can lead to infertility is premature ovarian insufficiency. Nowadays we see women who prematurely seems to be exhausting their eggs for some reason. Now it's poorly understood why some women have low number of eggs even when they are young but however when the egg number starts dwindling down prematurely this also can be a cause of infertility. The fourth hormone which is very vital for normal reproductive function is serum prolactin. Prolactin is a hormone that is secreted from the brain and is also important for reproductive function but however when it is secreted with very high levels can lead to an ovulation that is lack of egg development can lead to frequent menstruation and be a cause of infertility so women who have infertility it's very important to check their hormones which can include a serum amh level to know their egg number a serum prolactin level to know if the prolactin hormone is fine and a thyroid estimation which helps to understand whether thyroid is functioning optimally for a proper reproductive function. Coming to the next cause of female infertility, especially structural issues in the female reproductive system. Now structural issues can affect the fallopian tubes which are very critical structures which help in movement of the egg from the ovary into the uterus. Structural issues can also be affecting the uterus in the form of lumps or congenital anomalies and things like that. Fallopian tube issues can include a blockage in the tubes, especially with a past history of pelvic inflammatory disease or past history of ectopic pregnancy. There could be scarring of the fallopian tubes due to which the tubes may get blocked and the egg may not reach the uterus at all, leading to infertility and in which situation IVF is the only way of conception. The structure issues that affect the uterus can be in the form of fibroids. Now fibroids are lumps, they are benign lumps, non-cancerous lumps. They are lumps which are seen in the uterus which can actually alter the shape and size of the uterus leading to infertility. Basically they affect implantation, they affect movement of the egg and the sperm. They may actually move fallopian tube quite away from the ovary leading to a structural problem of pickup mechanism and etc. These are some of the main causes especially of the uterus leading to infertility. Now there is one other condition called as adenomyosis. Now adenomyosis is a condition wherein the endometrium that develops within the uterus month on month and sheds as menstruation can actually come into the wall of the uterus and lead to thickening of the uterine wall. Now this condition also is known to be associated with infertility and also ca can cause abnormalities of the pregnancy. There are some congenital anomalies of the uterus which also lead to infertility. Principal among them is a septum or septate uterus. Now this is an anomaly wherein there is a thin layer within the uterine wall which actually divides the uterine wall into two and this layer can actually lead to lack of implantation or also early miscarriages. So if there is a septum it's important that that is addressed before a lady plans for conception. Now other congenital anomalies could include a biconiate uterus or an undeveloped uterus and conditions like premature ovarian failure the, wherein the uterus hasn't developed at all. So a hypoplastic uterus. These kind of uh, conditions they 
there is problem with the uterus for a proper implantation and then leads to infertility the last but not the least is a condition called as endometriosis now endometriosis is a condition wherein the lady when she bleeds month on month it's the endometrium that sheds out through the vagina but sometimes this endometrium also has a regurgitation through the tubes back into the abdominal cavity now when it goes on to the ovary on to the pelvis it can start growing there now not everybody or not every lady allows it to grow there but some genetic factors can predispose a lady to allow the endometrium to implant there and continue to grow these kind of lesions eventually develop into something called as endometriotic cysts now endometriotic cysts lead to inflammation and because they are, they are in an ectopic place they are not supposed to be there but they are growing within the ovary they lead to inflammation adhesions tubal blockage and rarely the intestines can get blocked there and this condition is graded there are stages of endometriosis so depending on the stage endometriosis can also be a very important cause of infertility it's a very important question and a very vital question somehow in women age has a very crucial role to play as far as reproductive health is considered it not only affects fertility but also affects how a pregnancy is carried women are born with a certain number of eggs at birth and these start getting activated at menarche that is the time when a girl starts her first menses then year on year and month on month there are certain number of eggs that get activated but only one egg will release and by the age of 25 the reproductive system is functioning in a beautiful way and 25 to 30 is a very optimal age for women to conceive but after 30 between 30 to 35 there is a reduction in the egg number starts and this is not in a very remarkable way however after 35 there is an accelerated loss of eggs and by around 40 the lady usually would have exhausted at least 70 to 80% of the eggs somewhere around 45 to 50 is when menopause happens that is they lose the eggs completely leading to complete amenorrhea that is the menses stops completely now the problem with uh, advanced age that is between 30 to 35 to 40 is that it's not only that the quantity of eggs is low but also the quality is low there is something called as meiotic non disjunction that is the way in which the egg undergoes a reduction division to form a embryo so the lady contributes about 23 chromosomes the man contributes about 23 chromosomes eventually both of them come together to form an embryo with 46 chromosomes now this reduction division when the endogenous reduction division that mechanism is slightly faulted in women after 35 due to which there is a higher number of abnormal eggs in the lady this in turn leads to something called as aneuploidy that is a mismatch of chromosomal number in the embryo leading to a higher risk of infertility higher risk of miscarriages and a higher risk of down syndrome you might have heard down syndrome which is nothing but a extra chromosome at the point 21 of the chromosomes which leads to abnormalities in the baby that's the reason why it's very important that women should consider having the baby ideally between 25 to 30 if not so at least between 30 to 35 but if they foresee that they don't have plans of conception beyond 35 it's very important to freeze eggs in the event of uh, conception at an advanced maternal age the pregnancy is fraught with complications there's a higher risk of miscarriage there's a higher risk of gestational diabetes preeclampsia preeclampsia is a condition wherein a lady develops hypertension of pregnancy and the risks at the, around the time of delivery are also higher so it's important that women should try and conceive when they tend to have a good outcome during pregnancy and this would be somewhere between 25 to 35